Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. All taxpayers should know the telltale signs of common tax scams. IRS Tax Tip 2020-90 July 22nd, 2020. Uh, every year, tax scammers add new twists to well-known tax-related scams. There's a link to the tax-related scams here. And 2020 is no exception. Taxpayers should remember that the IRS generally first mails a bill to taxpayers who owes taxes. There are special circumstances when the IRS will call or come to a home or business. So the general policy for the IRS and notice they're a bureaucracy, so the, the general policy for the IRS is they send you a letter, you know, and you can either agree with the letter and or respond to it within 30 days. And if you don't, then they typically like send you another letter saying, hey, you didn't get the last letter. We're following up on that letter. That's the typical process that you will, will generally have with the IRS because they are, you know, a, a bureaucratic agency. That's kind of how they work. But there are special circumstances when the IRS will call or come to a home or business. Here are some tips to help taxpayers spot scams and avoid becoming a victim. Email phishing scams. The IRS does not initiate contact with taxpayers by email to request personal or financial information. So they're not going to go on the email, uh, email and say, hey, this is the IRS. We need, you know, your social security like right now. And, and especially not in like a, a threatening way that you, an urgency type way that you got to feel like you got to respond very quickly and give them, you know, personal information in response to an email. And remember, anytime you get an email like that from the IRS or, or, or you know, any kind of any kind of federal agency or something like that, you want to basically go back to the source, always go back to the source, go to the IRS website directly, not from the link to the email, but to the just go to the iris.gov. Back to the text. Uh, for ways to avoid these scams, read tips. There's tips here from the Department of the Homeland Security. For additional tips, check out Tax Security Together. There's a PDF link to that here. Taxpayers should report IRS, Treasury, or, or tax-related suspicious online or email phishing scams to phishing at irs.gov. There's, there's that here. There's a link to that here. Uh, they should not open any attachments, click on any links, reply to the sender, or take any other actions that could put them at risk. So you don't want to open any attachments because if you open any attachments, they could have some malware on it or whatever. Same with the links. You can't click on the links because it could have some malware on it. So if there are attachments and links, you don't want to open the attachments. And then again, you want to go to the iris directly. If you have any, any if you think there's any legitimacy to it, then drop it there and go to the iris directly don't don't ever call them either from the from the email account because again if you get to somebody on the phone that that has some personal information of yours they can be very good since they're scammers at at making themselves seem real <laughs> right with just a little bit of information so you don't want to go back and call from any contact line on the email but rather go to the iris directly and then ask about it from, from there. Back to the text. Phone scams. The IRS and its authorized private collection agencies will never leave pre-recorded urgent or threatening messages. So any kind of message, even if it's a, especially if it's a low quality message, you know, it's like cutting out and whatnot, then uh, that's not going to be the IRS. They're not going to leave a, a threatening message like call back now or, you know, something terrible will happen, you know. So, but, but again, if that's worrisome, that can be worrisome to get a me any messages like that. So I uh, go to the IRS directly. Don't call back the number because then you're going to talk to someone who may have some personal information. It could sound somewhat legitimate. What you want to do is, is contact the IRS directly if you feel the need to respond to it at all. But the bottom line is you don't want to really engage with the scammers directly at all because they could have some, some information that might make their stories sound somewhat uh, legitimate. So what you want to do is avoid talking to them completely and go to the source. And that would be the IRS. So back to the text, threaten to, to, uh, immediately bring in local police or lo other law enforcement groups to have the taxpayer arrested for not paying, uh, deported or revoke their licenses. So any, anytime there's a threat, again, the IRS doesn't generally work like that. They're, they don't generally call and say, pay us, or we're going to do something like right now because it's a long, slow process with the IRS because they're uh, a bureaucratic agency. So like I said, they typically send you a letter and say like, okay, either agree with it or, or, or give us a response and then we'll send another letter in 30 days. I mean, you typically know 
very well what the IRS is going to do beforehand because they usually, you know, write it out quite clearly very, very far in advance. Like you'd have to ignore them, <laughs> you know, generally to not know uh, what, what, what is going on. So if there's an immediate threat, that doesn't sound like a, you know, the normal thing, you know, it's not at all the normal thing that a bureaucratic agency like the IRS would typically be doing. So back to the text, call to demand immediate payment using a specific payment method such as prepaid debit card, gift card, or wire transfer. The agency doesn't use these methods for tax payments. So notice that in, in these instances when they want money, and you, anytime someone says, hey, I need money, you know, we're a legitimate source and we need money, we want money from you, but you need to do it in this specific way, then you got to be suspicious there because what they're trying to do is, you would think, is have some kind of way that, that the payment would have without an audit trail and so that they can't track who the payment went to. Well, why would you want to do that? Why would you put a payment on a gift card or something like that if you're the IRS and you're, it's, it looks like you're trying to cover up who gave the payment to whom and... um that obviously doesn't seem legitimate, you know, so you would think you'd want an audit trail on the payment. So uh, anytime there's kind of, there's some really specific way you have to pay us, you know, you can't pay us with a check, you can't pay us with any kind of normal wire transfer. I mean, you got to pay us, you know, in a specific way, then you got to be kind of suspicious. Back to the text, I uh, ask for checks to third parties. The agency has specific instructions on how to pay uh, taxes. So if they ask for, again, a specific way of payment, that should be that should ring some bells and say, hey, you just say, look, I'm I'm going to go to the IRS directly. You know, I'm not trying to ignore you here, but uh, I'll go I'll go there directly and, and follow up. Demand that taxes be paid without giving the taxpayer the opportunity to request or appeal the amount owed. So criminals can fake or spoof caller ID numbers to to appear to be anywhere in the country. So you might look at your caller ID and say, oh, well, that that's where they're coming from. What They can fake that. They could spoof, you know, the caller ID number. So scammers can even spoof an IRS office phone number or the numbers of various local, state, federal, or uh, tribal government agencies. If a taxpayer receives an IRS or treasury-related phone call but doesn't owe taxes and has no reason to think they do, they should hang up immediately. And again, that's the thing. If Even if you're talking to an agent, I mean, if you were to tell the IRS agent, hey, look, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I trust this. I'm going to hang up on you right now and I'm going to call the IRS directly. Then I think, you know, the agent would be OK with that if they're from the IRS, because then you'd be contacting the IRS and you'd be doing, you know, your best to, to talk to them directly. And if you're talking to someone who's a scammer, then again, they could have some bit of information like the, your Social Security number or something like that to sound legitimate. And then, then with some urgency, they could, they could, you know, make you feel that they're being legitimate there. So what you do is you just don't even engage with people like that. Just hang up on them and then, <laughs> and then contact the IRS. So contact the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Ad Administration to report the call. Report the caller ID and call box number to the IRS by sending it to phishing at irs.gov. The subject line should include, quote, IRS phone scam, end quote. Report the call to the Federal Trade Commission. If taxpayers owe tax or thinks they do, they should view tax account information. There's a link to that. So if you owe money, you're going to say, oh, man, I do owe money. That's true. Well, then, you know, go to the IRS directly. Go to the IRS directly and follow it up there, and you can view your information at the IRS on this link here at irs.gov to see the actual amount owed, review their payment options, and then you can go into all the payment options there uh, from the website. Call the number on any billing notice they receive or call the IRS at. So, and then you would want to contact them directly. So again, if you have any questions, like you think they're going to, their IRS is coming after you, then then uh, call the IRS, and that can be scary, you know, I mean, the, then call the IRS number directly, and here's 800-829-1040, 1040, it's nice and convenient, 800-829-1040.